in your life, you deserve to be more, be more, do more, have more, and give more. And now the Becoming More podcast with Diana Kokoska. Welcome to Becoming More. Here where you can learn how to become more through other people. And today I'm so excited because my husband, Tony DeSello, one of the greatest coaches of all times and recognized as such. I know he doesn't like it when I say that yet. Uh, he has been recognized. He's taken people from making a little bit to millions. And you did that by research and the study that you've done. Yes, I want to just be a little personal with you right now because you got on your Aston Martin racing shirt. Okay. So what was it about an Aston Martin that was so important to you? Well, kind of growing up, I grew up in the James Bond era. <laughs> so... <laughs> I guess he drove an Aston Martin and something I've always wanted. So uh, saved for it over a long period of time and bought it. So you made the goal to get an Aston Martin and then you worked towards it, put it in savings. And when you got it, did you take it out to race? I took it out. I, I have driven it on the uh, Circuit of America's yeah. track in Austin. <laughs> so uh, had a chance to not race, but have a chance to drive with a professional driver and taught me how to drive and how to drive curves and things like that. So it was quite interesting and in, in watching the progression. I'll tell you one thing I learned though, um, not only did I get a chance to drive it on the track with a, with a professional who talked me through it, was, um, I got a chance to drive another kind of a car and it was a, it was a Porsche GT3. And I said, no, you drive the track and I'll just drive along. And, and I had two more opportunities to drive my car on the track. And it was completely different driving it, having driven it with a professional. So sometimes just going to watch wow. professionals do their work and study what they do um, was really interesting because the difference between the, the time I had on a track before driving in that car and then driving after that was completely different. My speeds went up, my skills went up just by watching and kind of having internalized that a little bit about how he did it as opposed to how I did it. So, so shadowing, mm -hmm. it, it reminds me of a day when I went to a leadership program and I was able to shadow John Maxwell behind stage. And I spent the entire day with him, watching him, observing him, writing, uh, notes in between asking questions. I got to meet so many people like Dr. Henry Cloud, uh, talking with him, asking him questions, yet just shadowing John, looking at how he was adding mm -hmm. value to other people. So I'm curious, uh, Tony, what? how fast did you go? Because I know everybody's wondering that right now. Well, it was a it was a Formula One track, so there was just a little, a little straightaway. A straightaway was... I think I had 138. The, 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 the challenge on that kind of a track is not going in a straight line at 138 miles an hour. It's going around the curve that you think you should be doing at 50 that they would like you to do at 80. Oh, that oh, was not. Are you outside your comfort zone at all? Absolutely. You're earning around all. every curve because he kept saying, Why are you braking? I said, It's a curve. He said, Step on the gas, don't brake. <laughs> so, yeah, it was. Quite interesting. Well, the other part is when you shadow somebody, you get to see what they actually do versus they say they do, right? right? Mm -hmm. you, you get to see them in action. You observe things that you never get to observe when they're right. just telling you. And there's so many people, if, if you're somebody that is constantly uh, watching something and you learn from observation, like I'm a good learner from observation. Mm -hmm. I like to read and I can somewhat get it, yet I'm better watching the YouTube as to how they put yep. something together versus reading how yep. to put it together, right? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, so that that's good. So I'm glad we started there because it brings us to the research. The research of, that you've been doing and I've been doing after, especially the last five years, you mainly through your coaching, Yet I know you've continually spoken with agents that aren't doing so well and agents that are crushing it, knocking it out of the park. Mm -hmm. So what are you finding out there in your research? Well, 
what I'm really finding is that it kind of goes back to your one of your bold laws. Uh, and that bold law, it's simple and not easy. <laughs> so yeah, success is simple, not easy. easy. Right. right. And 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 that really boils down to the truth. Because when you look at what people are that are crushing it are doing, is they're just doing a few things over and over and over and get getting really good at it. It's like you can do 4,000 things, which a lot of people were right. to do, or you can do one thing 4,000 times. Right. Yeah. So it boils down the starting word, if you want to write this down on a piece of paper at the top, write down the word consistency. They're consistent at what they do day in, day out, day in, day out, month after month year after year, it's the same thing. We would call it repetitious boredom and they call it highly profitable. Right, and yet they continually improve their skill. Right. Like that driver that you see, right. you, you were taking the curve slow and then you got up to 80 miles an hour around the curve. Right, so I think, so one thing I learned is that we need consistency. And in talking to the people, it boiled down to this. Your job every day for 200 to 240 days a year is to go looking for appointments. Now we're talking about real estate here, yes. for all of you right. who are out there listening and or watching right. us. Yeah, the real estate world. The real estate mm -hmm. world and really the business world. If you're selling insurance, if you're selling stocks, if you're selling anything, you're look, having to do this consistently is one, and then you can just draw down the left hand side, left hand side of that circ of that word, and it's just finding appointments. Finding appointments every day. You're going to spend one, two, three, four hours those days finding appointments, okay. and then the other side of that consistency is consistency in building their skills. They're spending an hour or two a day building their skills. So basically they're learning what to say from the point of internalizing it, then memor uh, memorizing it, oh, pardon me, memorizing it, then internalizing it, and then really becoming personalized. So their scripts are personalized. And once they get that personalization done and they're really good at their scripts and dialogues, their conversion rate goes from 40 to 50% to 80 to 90, or in your case, your last year selling before you took the job at MAPS was 100%. So you went on 160 appointments and took 160 listings. Yeah, 62, so I didn't get 160, to. that's right. You got you turned down two and took 160. So you took the ones you chose. So for, for a, a realtor, if you had to go out on 320 appointments to get 60 listings, that's not possible. Going on 160 appointments and getting all 160 is a possible. It's possible if you practice enough and get good enough. So you have to just personalize the scripts. Nothing that comes out of your mouth should not be scripted, should be scripted. Nothing that comes out of your mouth that's right. is not made up. You're not, you're not gonna wing it. It just got to be planned because when you plan it, every step leads to a yes. Every little comment leads to a yes. Every question leads to a yes. And if you get them to say yes enough, you sign the contract. Yeah, they keep saying yes. Or you right. get the appointment or whatever. So on lead generation, that's part of the appointment. Also lead follow-up. Where do you think people fall down? Is it the lead gen or the lead follow-up? Um, in the world of today, it's the lead follow-up. Because what has changed drastically, I got my license in January 1975. So in two months, three months, I've had a license for 50 years. And the big difference is back in those days, you could find people where you could get an appointment on one phone call. It just doesn't, it doesn't happen. happen no, because people, yeah. the technology has put people in a position that they can start early. So what they do is they you get a lead, but that lead could be a year, a year and a half out, 18 months out. 
So it no longer is follow-up, it's nurture. Follow-up needs to be nurture. You have to build a relationship with those people so that you can become their trusted advisor. So the big difference is lead follow-up is constant communication. The other thing I learned, and I just learned this a couple of weeks ago on a call with fellow, uh, had some top agents on, and it's basically um, not only following up with them, it's following up with them a lot. What they found is back when Diane and I were selling real estate in the 80s and 90s, 70s, um, basically you could be recognized after six to eight touches with somebody. They recognize you. Today, just, it takes a lot. yeah, it takes a lot more. Just Amazon alone touches you two, over 2,000 times a year. Do you realize between the two of us, we have 97 years experience in real estate at a pretty high level because we both did that. Now, I want to just touch on something because you said to become a trusted advisor. And Dr. Henry Cloud said the way to build trust is we literally, one, we have to understand people. So if they're just, if realtors or insurance people, whoever's listening, if you're just talking about yourself and everything you do, is that really understanding the client, Tony? No. Basically, here's the key. We are not disseminators of information. <clears throat> we are interpreters of that information. They can get the information by just reading a post or yeah. watching an ad or watching a video. We need to interpret it. The only way we can become an advisor is tell them based on the news is interest rates went down. Yeah. What's what are all the factors of interest rates going down? So people are going to go, well, interest rates went down on Wednesday a couple months ago, a couple of weeks ago. And basically, what did everybody think? Now rates That's are going to go down. Well, they already went down because all the lenders yeah. anticipated the move. They already moved the rates down. So people are waiting for them to go lower, lower and our interpretation is it's already done. No, it, it's, there you go. It, it's really, you're, you've got to understand the person though too by right. asking questions. And right. then he says, you have to have the ability. That was the other thing you hit on is skill. Right. Do, do you think that salespeople literally study the profession of selling? No. See, there, there's too many salespeople that have been in real estate 10 years, yeah. one year at a time. So they've had 10 years experience, only they've had one year experience 10 times yep. instead of 10 years of experience. Right, yeah. Basically what happens, you don't build year two on top of year one on top of the three on top of one and two. And you build and build and build. And that's the simple part of it. Um, it's just building it, but we don't take the time to do that. Well, and the third thing he says, you've got to have the right motive. How many agents actually walk into the listing or into an appointment and it's all about making the sale, about making money? Their motive is incorrect. Yeah. Basically, we're there to be their servant. Mm -hmm. And so basically, the goal is to help them get their real estate goals accomplished. Whether they're buyer, seller, investor, whatever, our goal is to help them get what they want. And the more helpful we become, the more referrals we're going to get and the more a, a business that is built on relationships rather than on finding business. And then he also says, our character comes into play. How important is it to watch what we put on Facebook and all of those things to build that character? And what are some things that you did because you were known as a trusted advisor, somebody that people looked up to in the real estate industry, and that you not only had the skill, you had you you studied water rights, you studied taxes, you studied all these things that went along with selling real estate so you could help your people. Yep. Yeah. So how could they build their character? Basically, just start knowing what's happening in the real estate business. Mm -hmm. Are you getting up every day and going to the MLS and just studying what's happening? What's yeah. happened in the last 24 hours? Yeah, how many homes are even on the market? Right. I wonder if you asked realtors out there and said, how many homes are in the market right now today and how many sold in the last month? I wonder how many people could actually tell us. 
Be an interesting question. And then the, maybe you ought to ask yourself that. <laughs> the last thing he said is that we have to have a track record. Now you advertised and, and I did the same. We literally listed every home that we ever sold. Mm -hmm. And we put asterisks next to the ones that we sold more than once, right? Yep. And we gave that to every single person before we went on the appointment. Right. So right. how did that help you? Well, it, it basically it just helped me because they knew I had the experience yeah. needed to do the sales. So you, know, you you build part of your success in real in any sales business or any business really is the reputation you build. So knowing that I sold a lot of houses and I'm there to sell their house, yeah. now I have a track record that says here's all the houses I sold, and it was quite a few pages. So they just went well. Yeah. Well, you were showing a track record. So I just want to go through those one more time. And then I want to get on to some other things that you've helped people with. But number one, we've got to understand them. So this comes from asking questions, not talking about yourself, asking questions. Two, having the ability, upping your skill, go shadow people, go learn, study, understand. Your motive has to be where we're there to serve them. Tony, you told us that. Mm -hmm. You also told us to build your character mm -hmm. uh, and to make certain and watch what you do, watch what you post, because people are watching everything. Right. And then have the track record, improve the track record. So what else do you have for Well, I, one thing is, um, on top of that consistency, what consistency creates is the compounding effect. So if you do it 240 days, or let's say 200, make it simple math, 200 days a year, at the end of two years, you've done 400 days. At the end of, the, of those, you've done 4,000 days in 10 years. So it just compounds. You got to get better just by doing it. And then you, you create your efficiency effect. And then the key, the key to all this is who's holding you accountable to doing the two to three hours a day, who's holding you accountable to doing your role playing and your practice and your skills. So you said from going from consistency to compounding to efficiency. Yep. Excellent. Great advice to all of us. So, so that makes the business pretty simple. Whether you want to do a hundred closings, all you need to do is have a database big enough to do a hundred closings. You want to do 500, you just have a big enough database. You want to do a thousand or multiple thousands? You just need a big enough database. And consistently touch it. And consistently so touch it. How many times do you believe that we should be touching our database? The the number I'm hearing is 60 to 100 times a year. 60 to 100. And what are you finding out there? Because I know that you speak with a lot of agents and one, uh, one agent in particular that you love speaking with, he's doing what, three, 4,000 bill? And about 3,800 3, closes team did last year. Wow. I mean, there's offices not doing that. And yet he has a team that is doing that. How consistent is he? Um. Well, my first coaching call with him was April of 2000. So his team has not missed a day of lead generation of three hours a day since April of 2000. Since April of 2000. Now, his listing uh, specialist on his team, you were telling me the other day that they average yeah. 250 listings each. Yeah, his top five last year did average 250 listings each. Each one of them. Yep. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, when I do that math, 250 is literally 1,250 listings just out of five people. Yep. So I've got to ask you, as you're doing that, are you getting 250 listings? If not, you're going to want to listen to the rest of this podcast. Pick up a pencil, pick up a pen, get a piece of paper. I'm taking notes, that's for sure, and you should be taking notes as well. Yep. So tell me, if you're coaching us, and let's say that it's not real consistent, what would you tell us to do? Start with something you can do every day. I don't care if it's one call a day for 200 days, because then you can go to two, then you can go to three, and you can grow into it. You don't have to go from, because you're not going to go from zero well, to three hours a day. Your brain can't do no, it. It no. won't. Maybe so, you'll do it one day, right. and then you're done. So right? 
start with a number you can do and then just grow the number, grow right. the number, grow the number and grow your database every day. Work on growing your database. Because like one, one thing I did pick up um, is there's a new game being played. Uh, five or six years ago, everybody we talked to talked about data being the new oil. Right. Build build your database, build your database, build your database, build your database. Well, Zillow did, Move <laughs> did, did. Well, Realtor.com built all our databases. So now what we, I, I was listening to the call with fellow and they were talking about probably every person in your database is in, in anywhere five to 10 other databases. Mm. So the race, the race is now if, if you've got a big enough database, if you're in the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people in your database, now the new winner of the new game is what can Zillow not do, move not do, and realtor.com not do that have millions and millions and millions of names. What can't they do? They can't build a trusted advisor relationship. So now the race is who can get their database to be in a deep relationship with them so that when they do real estate, insurance, stock, whatever you're selling, you know, nuts and bolts, um, that they're going to come to you because you've built the relationship. Well, and one of the things is I've known, been going around the country and speaking with people, I said there are four things that we can do in today's market. One is that we've got to be innovative, which is what you're saying. What right. is someone else not doing that you can do? Secondly, build deep relationships. Third, make it easy. And then fourth, price. Not lowering your price, adding so much value, value. Mm -hmm. that they're willing to pay a yep. higher price for you. Yep. So are you finding that the top agents out there are lowering their prices at all? No, in fact. And there's no set price. Right. We get that, right? They yeah. get to say what they desire. Right. Yet they're getting paid top dollar. Yeah. Well, I talked to one team. Uh, oh, it was a market center, a real estate office. Right, and we're not talking percentages no. or anything like that. Yeah. Their their average commissions, right? So there is nothing. I know, went up one th the commission that it's they were doing, average. it was a one th one tenth of a percent higher than it was at the beginning of the year. Wow, isn't that amazing? And and as we know, that is not we don't set a price. Right, everything is negotiable. I want to make sure well, just everybody going to understands the that. Yet when we look at averages, we can do that. What I'm getting at is they're being paid a higher price than the other people are being paid. Right. And why is that? Because they understand the people, their motive is right, they have the ability, they have a track record, and they've got a great character. And you're telling us now to innovate, to build a relationship, mm -hmm. to make it easy and convenient for people to do business with, and to add value. So I want to keep recapping all these things that you're bringing up. The other part, though, that I find is easy. You talk a lot about efficiency. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. Efficiency has no hard costs. Right. So if you go on 10 appointments and take three, it means that you wasted 70% of that time. That's a good way to put it. If you go on... 10 and get eight, you're only losing 20%. And it took you the same amount of time. And the same, you no, know, yeah. You just got more, more for your dollar. And if you take them all, then you're hundred percent efficient. Now that can be done. You do really well if you could just stay in that 80 to 90%. And I just read something. Yeah. I oh, can't remember. Anyway, I heard it that this, I don't even know who it was, but they were just talking that their whole team, their goal is they have every person in that team be 90% efficient with their buyers and their sellers. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. Are mm -hmm. they getting close to it? Mm -hmm. Well, if it becomes a standard, then everybody has to has grow to into that number. Yeah. So what do they do? They just ask them to role play more, personalize their scripts and dialogues more. Learn how to build a better relationship. 
maybe spend more time eyeball to eyeball rather than ear to ear or read to read, you know. Are you thinking people are still out door knocking? Are they making calls? Are they using social media? What are you finding the most? Um, funny thing, the top teams are still doing FISBOs, FIRDs, <laughs> and databases. Wait, are you telling me things don't change that much? <laughs> Because when they look at our age and they go, what do you guys know about selling real estate in today's world? And yet, I think we know quite a bit. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Um, you know what? Even before I got into real estate 50 years ago, every seller asked, will you cut your commissions? You know, that script hasn't changed in the 50 years or the 97 years you and I have been around in real estate. That hasn't changed. What else hasn't changed? Because I know you've got notes right now from all this research you've been doing. And I want to make certain that everyone out there is hearing the great things that you have to share because you, you've taken time to study and learn what people are doing. Others, they, they go to an event and they, somebody stands on stage and say, here, use a script, here, do this, here, do that. And they're fed all this information, yet... By the time they get home, they go back and do the same thing all over again, right. most of them. Yep. So here's the thing. We are, you, you, you've you said this to a lot of people, we are. Oh, my quote. Yes, yep. we are addicted to information and allergic to implementation. Right. Yes, that has become a quote of mine. That's yes. for certain. Well, then that's what's happening. We want more information, and it really boils down to consistency of implementation. So, you know, and... I was told this story a really long time ago. In fact, I did it on, when I was doing some of the shift tours and I'd ask the question, how many of you that pick up your kids say, oh, I'm missing picking up my kids today because something came up. How many times does that happen? Well, it never happens. They're yeah. there somehow they find a way to get there yeah, to pick up their, their kids, kids from- Or they get them picked up. Right, right or they get them picked up. So. You never miss a day doing that. Just put the same sense of urgency into doing your, your lead generation and really looking for appointments. And that's another thing that when you're on the phone, when you're really good and you have everything personalized, you're listening at a different level. So one thing I've learned uh, in working with some of my clients when I was coaching is we would they would record calls and we didn't listen for how well they did the script. We were listening for, did you miss an appointment? Like that pause. When right. The pause where it shouldn't be um, an answer that doesn't seem logical. Um, you, you will know after a while, if you've done enough calls and I know when I was coaching for another coaching company, um, we were recording millions of calls and learning from all those millions of calls that we did every year. So what you look, you, you, everything becomes internalized and personalized. So the same with your hearing, your hearing will start hearing, oh, that's a lead. I need to ask more questions. I should be important for me to have the con keep the conversation going. And a lot of, go ahead. I, I know when you were a coach uh, with me and, it was very interesting because I asked all the coaches. Now, 357 coaches are on this call, right? One-on-one -on -one coaches. And I said, how do you prepare for a coaching call? And as CEO, I really desired to know what they were going to say. And they said, oh, I review the numbers. I look at the file. I, I go through the business. And they had all these different things. And then you came on and absolutely stopped the entire call with what you said. And you said, to prepare for a coaching call, I... Prepare to listen. I, I just wonder, when we start our phone calls, our lead generation, whether you're door knocking or you're even speaking to somebody, do you start your day preparing to listen? Yep, I, I think, um, and what I meant by that is, uh, I have, when I dial a number and they say hello, uh, for me, I'm listening to the hello. I'm not having anything else. 
on my mind except hello. And my coaching agenda could change on hello. This is so good. And don't miss this, folks, because I think the big thing that you're saying is even if you're on a listing appointment, if you're in real estate, an insurance appointment, I don't care what appointment, even if you're sitting there at the grocery store behind the, uh, the counter and you're waiting on somebody, did you prepare to listen? Because that's how we get understanding. Yeah, because if they, if they, if I go hello and and I don't hear a normal hello, then my first question is, what's happening? Because, and after a while, if you ask enough questions, you intuitively could tell by the tone of their voice whether it's what's happening is out of out of norm. So I think that's critical. And listening to the questions or their answers is a couple of things. One, it gives you where they're at emotionally. Um, and two, it basically is going to tell you the direction they want to go. So, or the, the call should go. And the third thing, I guess there's a third thing too, is their answer gives you the next question most of the time. It really does. Yet how many people, you? we always said go 3D. Right. What, what does that mean? You ask them a question, you get an answer. You ask them another question based on that question to get more information, then they answer that, you take that, ask them another question based on that answer to learn more. And eventually it's amazing when you have conversations with people, I used to have buyers come to town to be relocated and you're in a car with them, you met them 10 minutes ago and they're telling you their life history. You go. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> yeah. Or you're going, holy cow, where did that all that come from? I'm just looking for what kind of house you want. <laughs> so over the last five years, if you step down from coaching, yet you're still talking with people, what other research are you finding, Tony, that will help all of our listeners out there okay. become more? The lead follow-up is becoming more critical. Yeah. And so, you know, that we have to, in fact, I even tell, told clients back then, if you're behind on your lead follow-up, stop lead generating and start getting caught up on your follow-up. That's how critical it is, because in today's market, we can't afford to lose a lead ever. Well, you you said to one lady, I remember she was leading, losing some of her staff, and uh, these were the buyer's agents and various people because she stopped paying for leads. Right. Do you remember that story? So, so what happened? I mean, she stopped paying for leads and you told her, just go back. How many leads do you have? Yeah, and... I've talked to one gentleman, he had same situation. He was buying Boomtown leads. He had 4,000 uncalled leads and he kept buying. And I'm going, so is your goal to have 5,000 people you never talked to? Or would you like to get to 6,000 and never talk to me? Just right to the point. Well, that's, that's you know, the, truth. the truth is he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars getting the leads, quote unquote, or a nurture is what you're buying is, you're buying a nurture, so you need to nurture them. And if you're going to have to talk to them 60 to 100 times or communicate with them 60 to 100 times using every media possible, talking to them, knocking doors with them, doing uh, YouTube videos, doing video emails, Facebook, yes. you know, Facebook and you know, all those things, we have to be communicating with them. So we have to do the lead follow-up. And then you've got to know where they are. Even if they're two years out, all that does is tell you how many times you need to talk to them. If they're two weeks out, you talk to them every day. If they're a month out, you might talk to them every other day. But using the pipeline or some kind of a pipeline report, hottest to maybe people a month out, you don't want to be, you know, you don't need, you don't need to worry about a month. You need to be worried about the people that are 30 days away and convert those leads. And you, uh, no matter what, you can't afford to lose a lead because of lead follow-up. Now, let me ask you, did he stop paying for the leads and just following up? And what, if so, what happened? Never knew. He never called back. <laughs> well, the one lady said that she stopped 
doing the leads. Right. And just started calling all of them and started sending more appointments than she ever thought possible. Right. And and all the people left because she wouldn't buy leads yet. They had a gold mine. Yeah. So here's the thing. You buy a lead and they're 18 months out. So that's a nurture. You could go to start a farm, start knocking doors on a farm or calling in a farm and communicating it with that farm 60 to 100 times a year. It's no different than buying a nurture 18 months out. You still have to go and you, you have, have to, to do the you. work. Yep. Yeah. So why don't you just chunk out 2,000 people, start communicating with them 60 to 100 times a year. In fact, I, we had a fellow that we ended up having dinner one night as a group, and he said he took took a thousand people, touched them sixty five times in a year, did the survey, give us the top three realtors, you know, like the old uh, Hobbs and Herder idea, touched them sixty five times, did the same call at the end of the year. He went from not being present to being in the top three of every person they talked to. So we we can create these nurtures. That's that's basically lead follow up. Well, and on the mentoring calls that I do and uh, having that mentorship group, you were on the other day, we were talking about being everywhere. Right. The emails, the social media, they've got to find you. Or do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, what are you finding with people? Are they just focused on one thing or do you find them in multiple areas? We have to be in everything. Um, and going back to that call, like I said, Diane and I, during an era, it took six to nine communications before you became visible. On that call, they said it takes over 25 to be visible. So if you're touching them 15 times a year, you're short 25 times for, even the, for them to even recognize you before you can even create a relationship. Yeah. Times. yeah. If you're going to, if you're going to do it, do 60 or a hundred. Don't do, you know, doing less than 25 is going to get you nowhere. Well, one thing I also, I keep saying one thing, it's many things that you're doing. And a lot of people go, why does Tony still take classes? Why does he still read in the news every day? Why does he read the articles about real estate? And because you're not selling, you're not coaching. Yet right now, I think you're more prepared than most people out there that are actually in the business doing it every day. What advice do you have for people that are in real estate? Maybe some of the things that they're not noticing, or quite frankly, maybe they should join the mentorship program and literally start finding out these types of things that right. we can share with them, right? Right. Well, what we basically boils down to this, find, do a one, three, five. What's the one thing you want to do? So you want to do 75 closings, okay? Right. One thing we know, one of your action items, your your goal, you have your goal of 75 or 50 closings. Then you have your GP, which is your priorities. One three. of them, yeah, three of those. And then one of them needs to be finding appointments. One of them needs to be lead follow-up. One of them needs to be building your skills. Yeah then what are the priorities below those in this, so you know, strategies? And so basically that, just build that. And basically, here's the thing, build that starting today. Build that from today through the end of 25. You know, isn't it interesting because uh, back in the day as CEO, I had a 135 for literally everything, every mega camp, every coaching skills camp, and whatever we were going to be involved in, we had a 135. Most people just do a 135 for their business. One goal for the entire year. Yeah, why can't you have goals? Goals in skill setting, goals in, I mean, a lot of people don't even have a personal growth plan, Tony. Right. And here you're growing every single day. So I want to ask our listeners out there and the people that are watching YouTube, what are you doing to grow every single day? What is your personal growth plan? Yep. And and I, I we were part owners in market centers and regions. And so right. that's where I spend my time. And if I'm going to spend time with somebody, I want it to be very usable for them. So I study so that, I'm, you know, 
I've been in real estate for 50 years. I don't want to say, well, that, that's outdated stuff. Well, first of all, nothing's outdated. Selling is selling is selling is selling. Same when you bartered with the Indians you know, back I, in. Oh, yes, back in the day. I still quote Zig Ziglar on things. And Zig Ziglar is past. And I mean, I think I was about 10 years old or maybe eight years old. I don't know when I started listening to him. So things that are really good. Principles never become outdated. Right. Practices do. And you're having all these Zoom calls with the market centers that we're involved in, with the regions that we're involved in, and you're helping people. The ones that actually listen and implement, what's happening to their businesses? It's, it, they're blowing up. Yeah. Because 50% of the realtors are in chaos over what happened on August 17th. Right. So well, what so what you're telling me is mindset really matters as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. What is it that some people sit back and say it can't be done, and others are laughing at them as they're doing it? I have no answer for that one. <laughs> well, the big thing is believing, all right. And the other part is having great mentors. I I was reading uh, just the other day where. Uh, my goodness, uh, Oprah Winfrey, Bill Gates, uh, all, all of these great people, they all have mentors, even today. So um, Sir Richard Branson, I was mm -hmm. reading about his mentors. So I, I want to ask the people out there, who are your mentors? Who are you listening to? And are you paying them? Because the people that pay for education actually get more out of it right. than the people that get it for free. Yep. So I noticed you see even more notes there. So I, I know we've only got about two or three minutes left. What do you want to hit on that I haven't asked you about yet? Um, I just think it's, it just really boils, that boils down to doing this every day. Every day, consistency. Every day, consistency. And finding appointments, consistency, and skill building. We don't need any more than that. Right. That's all you need to do. But do it at such a level that it's a mastery level. So just so don't get good at it. There was a quote from a long time ago that said, amateurs work until they get it right. Professionals work until they never get it wrong. Yeah, the big difference. And the other part that I think is very important that you brought up is continually learning, right. continually studying, and practice and drill and rehearse. I, I took a lot of notes and I put down that consistency compounds, the mm -hmm. efficiency that we have to innovate, build relationships, make it easy for them to contact us and add value to where they know that you are worth more than any agent out there. A realtor is a realtor is a realtor is not correct. Right. We got to distinguish ourselves. You also said listen at a different level. Mm -hmm. Right. So parting words. Um, you know what to do. Go do it. <laughs> and that is how you become more. Right. Right. Just practice, drill, rehearse. And watch who you're listening to. Right. There's a lot of people out there that are actually providing psychological confusion. Right. Some of the things they're saying or asking or some of the scripts that they're using. It's like the old harsh, let's go after them. Uh, the pandemic changed yeah, us. Absolutely. And so now we've got to ask more questions. Right. Got to go back in and really, truly understand the person. So that's how you become more folks and listen to our podcast. Tony, we'd love to have you back again and uh, hear more of your wisdom because you. you're very wise at what you do. And I love the fact that you're still learning each and every day, still taking notes. We've got about uh, probably 30 papers on the floor, folks, that we could go through each and every one of them. He was deciding what he wanted to talk to you about today. So come back when you can learn to become more every Tuesday. We're here with a new episode. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. My pleasure. 
In your life, you deserve to be more, be more, do more, have more, and give more. And now the Becoming More podcast with Diana Kokoska. I